church can come together yes, and um, coming together is the beginning and then working together is progress and staying together is success um, we can just um, start with step one continue step two go to step three and um, accomplish the will of God in our life as the ecclesia that is uh, we use those terms sometimes. The Greek just meaning simply the collective body or the gathering or the um, those that we uh, congregate. And uh, we we know that um, we are that group tonight. We're here. We chose uh, in our spirit, and there were two choices made. God made choice that we could come, and we made choice that we would go. And uh, so together, God's will and our will synchronized tonight to the point where we're here. We have arrived in this place, this holy place, this place where we liken it to a burning bush sometimes. Um, and uh, we take off our, <coughs> our shoes, our understanding, and we... Uh, seek uh, to hear the voice of the great I am yes. out of this uh, burning burning place of dedication the altar of the Lord the fire of the Lord burning here uh, as his congregate body his gathering comes together and uh, the church is a wonderful place to be on a Wednesday night Amen. and if you came in the right spirit and you came to love him to worship him and you came to use your mental faculties to present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto the Lord uh, Paul said that was our reasonable service sometimes we don't think so but it is he said let us present uh, our body as a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed, just uh, watch and be careful that we're not being fashioned, we're not shaping ourselves. We have to watch that. Only a spiritually intelligent mind can keep a person in the time that we're living in to fasten their eyes on the Lord and to um, keep their mind on God uh, throughout this uh, awakening hours that we live on this earth because there are so, so, so many distractions every moment, every hour, every day. There are so many distractions that is seeking to um, turn and um, let us sleep and the enemy come in and so seeds um, that would uh, hinder our relationship and our understanding and our development with God. Um, so, so it is a critical hour, but it's a good hour. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed. That is, we have a mission that the world doesn't have. The world doesn't have that mission. We do. Be you transformed. The word transformed, to my understanding, means to be changed to. Uh, doesn't it? Transformed. Changed to. 
changed out of to change from to um, change. And then that uh, uh, wonderful change that uh, God uh, does. Philippians uh, 3.21 said, uh, Paul said, uh, who shall change our vile bodies, our vile bodies, our worthless bodies. Vile is contemptible. If the word vile, it means you're contemptible. If you're a vile person, you're a nasty person. You're an ugly person. You're vile. You're a vile person. Uh, so uh, our vile bodies, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned, and that's the process now, like unto his glorious body. Uh, according to the working whereby, now that's the way it's done, according to the working uh, by, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The working that God uses to mold the clay as a potter does the clay is a mystery. Uh, it's called the mystery of godliness in the scriptures. The mystery of godliness. Um, that is, um, it's a mystery. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a mystery. And the reason it is, is because that working whereby he is able to bring to submission all things in us, in our vile bodies unto himself, and fashion it so that then uh, we have another body, yes. another body body, another house, a glorious body, his glorious body, an angelic body. And so that's our hope um, that we have, and we can attain it uh, by the grace of God. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to come together, and it's good to realize what our goals are, and what we're working for. And at the end of the day, what our penny will consist of that the Lord's going to give us uh, because whether you came uh, we didn't some did at the sixth hour as the parable goes or whether we came at the ninth hour but we didn't that was 2,000 years ago the, the early church the church of the first century they came at the sixth hour and then later some the ninth hour um, and then some will come at the 11th hour. That's our hour. The 11th hour is the dispensation of time uh, that we are now in. Um, the 11th hour. Uh, it's soon midnight. Now it's the 11th hour. That's the time dispensation that the church is in right now. So it's late, isn't it? It's late. Yes, it is. But, but we, still, we still get a penny. We still, we still get a reward if we labor and labor earnestly and labor right. Uh, the scripture said in uh, Ephesians 1 and 10, uh, that's, that's Philippians 3 and 21, who shall change our vile body. But in Philippians, that is in Ephesians, uh, the, the scripture that tells us uh, you know, uh, that, that, uh, that in the dispensation, verse 10, that in the dispensation or the giving out, the dispensing of the fullness of time. And it's uh, the fullness of time now is now coming about. It's the 11th hour. Uh, that in the dis uh, dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together all things in one, all things in Christ, oh, yeah. both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in heaven. That simply means that the finished work of grace is going to take place in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Then the covenant is fulfilled, the covenant of grace. As the covenant of the law was fulfilled at the coming of Christ, so is the covenant of grace going to be fulfilled in the dispensation of the fullness of times. When God is through with time, and remember if you read your Bible 
and read the 10th chapter of Revelation, um, that in the 10th chapter of Revelation, there's an angel that stands with him one foot on the earth and one foot in the sea and the little book in his hand and declares, time shall be no longer. It's true. Time. It is time for you to get saved. Uh, he that is holy, that's also revelation. He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, well, just let them be filthy. You're not going to be washed, cleansed. God's through. The washing's over. If you're a sinner at that moment, you'll die a sinner. Um, uh, if, you, if you're saved, you'll die saved. Um, at that moment, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is um, uh, filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous uh, still. Because time is no more. See, we are used to time. Uh, we have time to come to the Lord now. We have time to be here on a Wednesday night. We have time to be saved. We have time for everybody to pack the vans out tomorrow, the cars, and go to Port Charlotte and have a fellowship meeting. There will be a fellowship meeting in Port Charlotte tomorrow night. Brother Randy Wilkes will be with us uh, there, and he'll be with us uh, and we're over in Sebring Friday night. Then he'll be here Saturday night with a church here. This police officer from Macon, Georgia, that 27 years, a police officer, and he's resigning his police commission to minister the gospel. Um, and his wife is a blessing with her singing. They'll be here with us. Uh, it's time for them to be. It's time for us to go. It's time for us to build the house of the Lord uh, because everything has to be fulfilled yes. in the time. It's time for the church to be set in order, divine order. It's time for this to be a house of prayer for all people. Uh, we have to work on that. It's time for us to have the right spirit, the right attitude toward the rest of God's family. It's time for us to put away all malice and all um, intent of evil, all anger, and um, let not the sun go down on your wrath. It's time for that to be fulfilled. In other words, don't, don't go to bed angry. Don't go to bed angry. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Um, see, these scriptures are all so precious. I'll be glad that when we can, um, we can get them in our heart. Hey, don't, 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 don't go to bed angry. Uh, get anger out of your heart before you go to sleep because you have no control over your body. You couldn't call 9-11 if you wanted to when you're sleeping. Isn't that right? Someone said, oh, I'll just call 9-11. I feel something wrong with me. You're sound asleep? You're going to call 9-11? Uh, uh, did you know many people die in their sleep? Their heart stops beating. They die in their sleep. And uh, well, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that grudge. I'm going to fix that anger. I'm going to fix that problem I had. I'm going to fix it in the morning. Morning may not come for you. It may not come. You may not see morning. Come on, brother Morning. Did you know there are ministers that have died in the pulpit? Uh, Brother John, I can't think of his last name, out in uh, Phoenix. Pardon me? Uh, Brother Lloyd did also, yes, when he got out of the pulpit, uh, didn't he, Brother Carlson? He, he got here, sat down in his chair, wasn't it? And then he got up and went outside into the baptistry approach. That's where he died. Brother Lloyd Goodwin. Uh, uh, this brother John, I can't think of his last name, I knew him well, but he turned around in the pulpit and quoted a scripture and said, uh, this is the way the scripture said it, and just died. And uh, never made it out of the pulpit. You don't know that you'll get out of your bed in the morning. And there needs to be a sense of awareness in us about serving God, about fixing wrongs, and making wrongs right. 
Uh, I was coming down 9th Street today, and I saw her a nice, new, beautiful car and smashed right into the back of a big semi. Tore that car all to pieces, that big, beautiful car, luxury car. There at 9th, the 9th, um, I guess the semi, he didn't put his brakes on in time and ran into that semi. It looked like me, what was, looked like somebody may have died there, could have. You, you, you and I don't know the next moment. Uh, Jesus said, your time, but your time is always. My time has yet not has not yet come. They, they, no one, no one could have taken the life of Jesus before it was his time. But Jesus said, my time hath not yet come, but your time is always. Now, why am I saying these things? To make the church aware that we don't have uh, the tomorrows unless God gives us those tomorrows. Amen. So let us work while it is day. Amen. For the night cometh. That's, that's death. For the night cometh. That's death. When no man can work. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, verse 5, said, The living know that they shall die. But the dead know not anything. Right. A living dog is better. Uh, that is, a, uh, yes, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Yes. Um, and he said, uh, in the grave, there's no wisdom in the grave. No there's no work in the grave. No. There's, no, um, the, 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 there's no activity in the grave. Some. So while it is day, and these scriptures uh, that I'm giving you here, it's good for the collective body of the collective church to come together and let's redeem the time let's, let's sharpen our swords and I want to see this uh, assembly again in such divine order till God will so talk to the men the elders the leaders the preachers the pastors the feeders of the flock and then talk to the saints until we won't have to depend all right we're gonna have two songs three songs and then we're going, tomorrow's going to do our best to get us in an effort to praise the Lord. And then Brother Marlon's going to get up like I am now speaking. And that's the way it's going to be. No, let this thing grow in the Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost work. Let the Holy Ghost work in your heart. Let the Holy Ghost give you a message so that you watch the Spirit. And if, um, if there is a, uh, you can see there's an opening. That opening may be for you. You may be the one that God is talking to. And then we're to give preference at times, some services. Uh, even if you have a testimony, uh, even if you're ready to move as a saint of God, hesitate, wait, let the Lord uh, help you, guide. Don't quench the spirit, but give, uh, give honor uh, to the uh, elders that have served long, and give them time to uh, rise to their feet and see if they have a message. And if they do, then let's wait on one another the same way and give each other time at times. Unless the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, is just moving you out. But then on the other hand, don't let the time die. Uh, don't, let, don't, don't, don't let time be wasted. See, there's a medium. There's a balance. There's a happy balance in there to where... Uh, we feed the sheep, and elders always lead the church. They always have preference. Uh, but then the saints are ready to move. And some of our women that are ministers also, they too mingle into this area. Watch the Spirit. And, and, and after a while, as we get closer and closer to the coming of the Lord, there can be an order this world has never seen of the New Testament church shining in its glory, shining in the glory of God, and the Lord touching uh, a pastor here, or a brother there, or a sister there, or a song there, uh, or a praise there. Just what God will do. What does he want to do? And uh, uh, we, 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 we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, 
and that's our reasonable service, and we're not conformed to this world. We don't act like, we don't walk like, we don't talk like, we don't look like the church world nor the secular world because we're a peculiar people. We happen to be a holy nation, happen to be chosen, uh, regenerated, set aside for the special uh, that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into marvelous light. Praise the name of the Lord. So, so these scriptures mean uh, such a great deal. See, when Paul uh, spoke to uh, the church of Ephesus, and he said in uh, the second chapter of Ephesians, but ye, ye, like you can say ye or you, it means the same, you who were dead, verse 1, isn't that verse 1? You who were dead in trespasses and sin. You who were dead. That, that was me. Was that you? I was dead. I was as dead as dead could be. Uh, dead. Knew nothing about me. Loved God, wanted God, knew God, sensed God, smelled God. I was dead. I was ungodly, unlike God. And um, I was a sinner by nature. Yes, sir. Not breaking God's law by knowledge, but by nature. I was a sinner. Later I became a sinner if I broke God's law by knowledge. Yes. But here he said, you who were dead and trespasses in sin, had the quick He goes on down in that chapter, and he's dealing with Jew and Gentile. And he's trying to bring together the Jew and the Gentile. I had that lesson here Monday night in the Bible study in another vein. But he said, uh, he goes on down, he said, now then, yes. that verse, I don't have the verse up, but now then, same chapter. Now then are you no more. No more. Verse 12. Now then are you no more strangers. Why did he say strangers? Because under the law, a Gentile was allowed to travel with Israel. A Gentile could go with Israel. They could attach themselves to the 12 tribes of Israel. But they, they were known as strangers. They were never called an Israelite. They were never taken in as an Israelite. They were a stranger. Um, and, but here Paul said, now then he was writing to a Gentile church. The church of Ephesus was the, a Gentile church. It was the seed of Diana, the goddess of uh, fertility. Um, and here he would say, but now then, verse 12, you are no more, now therefore you are no more strangers. You were one time, but you're not now. I'm not a stranger now. I travel with the company of God's people as one of the uh, children of God. I happen to be a child in the house tonight. So do you. Uh, we're not uh, we're not Jew nor Greek. We're not born or free. We're not male or female. But we're one in Christ. We're the family of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm not a stranger any longer. Now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners. I mean, that the foreigner, someone doesn't belong there uh, in the, in, without citizenship, but fellow citizens. Fellowship. Oh, I like that. Praise God tonight. Oh, my, my, I've got my blessing right there. Praise God. i got my blessing right there. Fellow citizens. Hello, fellow citizens. Nice to see you here, fellow citizens. Look over and say, hello, fellow citizen. <laughs> Praise our God. Fellow citizen. Fellow citizen. We're the saints. We're with the saints. Fellow citizen. And of the household of God. In whom, uh, and you're building together. The verse, the next verse says, and you're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I'm glad I know what my cornerstone is tonight. I know what I'm built upon. I'm built upon the 12 apostles, with Jesus Christ being my chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitly framed together. The next verse said, you know, the whole building 
yes. built upon the foundation. Yes. See, the whole, uh, the whole church, yes. the whole ecclesia, no more strangers, foreigners, Jews, Greeks, bond, free, uh, Gentiles, but uh, and in whom the whole building being fitly framed together. That's what the Lord is trying to do with us as our assemblies. He brings us in. Here he brings Brother Lee in, Sister Maria. Here he brings this one in. Here he brings that one in. He brings uh, Brother Northland from Jamaica. Um, and he brings this one from this place. This one from that place. And here he brings us together. And we really don't fit together when we first get together because we haven't been together. But you just let us stay together. Coming together is a beginning. Working together is progress. Staying together is perfection. Praise God. You just let us stay together. Yes, sir. We'll fit. Yes, we will. We're going to fit. Yes, sir. The victory. We're not going to be a misfit. We're every stone that Solomon, when he was building his temple, every timber that King Hiram allowed him to cut down from the cedars of Lebanon and all of the material they gathered. Was it seven years they gathered it? Is that, is that right? Yes. Me, your brother, and help me. Seven and a half years. Seven and a half. Was it seven or seven and a half? Seven and a half, seven and a half years they, that Solomon was gathering that, cutting it, framing it, working on it, those stones being framed, chiseled, I suppose. Uh, well, it couldn't have been, uh, it couldn't have been, uh, it, it, he had to work on what he brought together. Yes. They had to finally bring it together, but when they brought it together, when they brought it together, there wasn't a sound of a hand. Because all those stones and all those timbers fitted together. Someone get me the chapter over there in the Chronicles where that uh, king, for that is done, where he starts building his temple and I'll let them study on it. Um, it's, a, and it it's a beautiful study. There wasn't a sound of a hammer putting together that beautiful temple. And when they dedicated that temple, uh, the glory of the Lord came in it and they could not even minister. The priest couldn't minister. A hundred and twenty, wasn't it a hundred and twenty thousand sheep that were sacrificed to dedicate that temple um, on the day of the dedication? A hundred and twenty trumpets of bloom dedicated that temple. Yes. What a beautiful picture that is Amen. of the house of God. In whom the whole building, Paul said, and in whom all the building rather, fitly framed together. Here it is, Second Chronicles 5 and 1. Also the Levites, <clears throat> that was the serving tribe, which were the, uh, which were the singers, all of them of Esphat. That's verse 12. Uh, that's uh, uh, all right. Uh, Second Chronicles 5. Yeah, 512, it just cut off. See All right, screen? our screen is not right right now. You old partners, uh, our computer uh, went out on us and it isn't like it needs to be yet, but that's uh, 12, pardon me. Uh, I can only see one. Second Chronicles 5 and 12. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Aspha, of Heman, of Jethotham, with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen. Can you picture that? Can you picture what's coming for the church? Can you picture what God's going to lead us into? Uh, the dedication. Remember this in the Bible. The antitype is always stronger and more meaningful than the type. When you read the Bible and you read a type, and then you read the antitype yeah. of that in the New Testament, that which is concealed in the old, and you, then you see it revealed in the new. Yes. See, the old, the New Testament 
is concealed in the Old Testament. And the Old Testament 